This is the long-awaited sequel to The Punisher. If you haven't seen the first part, be sure to click on the link in the description. Frank and Ema are overtaken by assassins, but he's up to the task and shoots them down. A couple hours before, he'd gone to a bar to enjoy a cold beer and listen to a local band. Amy walks up to the bar. She immediately asks why Frank is looking at her, but he doesn't know how to answer that. Two guys ask Beth to join them for a drink. Beth refuses, but a man grabs her arm. Frank steps in behind the woman. The man stands up and starts pointing his finger at the Punisher. He gently hints that he shouldn't be touched. The local bouncer, Ringo, chases the bully away. Beth gives him a bottle of beer. Amy dials a number. At this time, John Pilgrim interrogates the man who was the one Amy called. John puts her on speakerphone. Amy worked for Fiona, but she was killed. She sets up a meeting at this bar to hand over the photos John is after. But she didn't realize John overheard her conversation. Then she kills the man. Frank tells her he's traveling in America and decided to stop at this bar. Beth offers to stay with her until he leaves. Frank immediately agrees. Amy had no money causing her to break into the motel room and lock the door behind her. After the fun, Frank talks about his life. He even tells his real name. Beth asks why he introduced himself under a different name. Maybe he's a criminal, but Frank assures her that he is a normal person. Everything that happened to him is in the past. Now he's starting a new life. But moments with his past family and the friend who killed them still flash before his eyes. It's, you don't learn about pain. You don't learn about love. it's a new day. Frank is about to leave home and notices Beth's son. His name is Rex. Beth calls Frank a friend. He suggests going to a cafe, and the boy happily agrees. Aren't you all getting married or something? No. I think we all are just friends. After breakfast, the duo arrives at the bar where Frank has left his car. Coincidentally, as Frank was leaving the room, he accidentally bumps into Amy. She accuses him of following her and immediately leaves. Frank begins to suspect that something has happened to the girl. On the way out of town, Frank contemplates his life and questions Beth. She is very happy that Frank has decided to stay. A little later, he notices some suspicious people entering the bar. Amy drops her backpack on the ground but is caught by the bandits. Frank pretends to be very drunk and wants to check on his friend. Hearing screams, he makes his way to the bathroom. The bandits have knives, but Frank has enough for a regular belt. He defeats the bandits single-handedly, but in the heat of battle, he has to break a lot of furniture. Frank orders him to tell them who these people are. Ama tries to escape, but Frank says there are more killers in the club. And if she wants to survive, she has to tell who wants to kill her. Frank tries to get the girl out of the club, but they're spotted. Another fight breaks out. Ringo comes to Frank's aid, but the thugs use knives and kill Ringo. Beth gets a shotgun and helps Frank, but Beth herself gets wounded. Frank runs to the shotgun and kills the rest of the opponents. Having performed first aid, he puts Beth in the car and drives to the hospital. But he is constantly hampered by bandits, with whom the MP5 does a great job. Amy tries to escape, but he pushes her back in. A little later, they find the hospital, and Beth is taken away by the medics. Meanwhile, John is looking around the club and finds Frank's ring. In the commotion, Amy has forgotten her backpack. After looking through the CCTV cameras, they realize exactly who is helping Amy. Due to his severe injuries, Frank literally loses control. Amy offers to stop, but Frank is sure she will try to escape again. The next day, they park near a motel. He gives her money and asks for a room. Debbie seems weird about being given blood money, but gives him the room key anyway. Frank can't get the bullet out and asks Amy to help him. After a couple minutes, she tries to escape again. This forces Frank to tie her to the bed, after which he is able to go to bed in peace. By this time, Billy has come to his senses and he remembers what happened to him. But to other people, he says he doesn't remember anything. His face is disfigured and he has to wear a mask. Dina is well aware that Billy is faking his amnesia, but his doctor is convinced that it's impossible. When Dina leaves, the doctor releases Billy. John comes to see Beth. He wants Beth to tell him the name of the man from the bar or her loved ones may be hurt. She says Frank's name is not her real name. John falls for her lies. Frank wakes up with a chair across from Amy's bed. He once again wants to know what is going on. In her pockets, he finds some photographic film. 
Frank blames himself for deciding to help a girl who doesn't even want to tell the whole truth. A couple minutes later, he goes over to Debbie's to buy the next room. Back at Amy's, he breaks through the wall to combine the rooms. Dina meets Raphael. She tries to convince him that Billy remembers everything, but he asks Dina to forget about Billy. Now he's being handled by other special services. Late at night, Frank notices people watching the motel so that Amy can protect herself. He gives up his gun. However, she decides to point the gun at Frank. The mercenaries storm the room, but don't find the duo. They manage to hide in another room, and Frank sets a trap and kills most of the mercenaries. He survives one woman to find out who they are working for. Taking advantage of the commotion, Amy steals the Punisher's car, but all the exits are blocked by the police, so they have to surrender. All the suspects are taken to the sheriff's office. Sheriff Harden interrogates Amy, who tries to convince him that she was kidnapped. Frank has a broken hand, but he refuses medical attention. To find out who the men are, the police collect fingerprints and DNA testing. Johnny is informed that three people have been put into the police database. He thanks God for his help. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Frank has to turn to Dina for help. She's the only one who can help him. She says that they helped him become a new man, and now he has to deal with his own problems. A couple hours later, John personally arrives at the police station where Amy is being held. All his life, he has been a very religious man. His wife is sick, and it takes a lot of money to cure her. One day, Anderson asked him to prove his faith and complete a task. John agreed. The sheriff found out that Amy was hiding under many names and Frank is crystal clear. The sheriff suspects that an ordinary man can kill mercenaries. He's probably an ex-Marine. The woman orders her release before it's too late. Meanwhile, Billy has a temper tantrum and beats up the police who were supposed to be guarding him. And Dr. Krista helps him escape. A federal agent arrives at Hardin's to pick up the suspects. The sheriff wonders how they know they're holding a young girl since they haven't even processed her because of which he asks them to wait until Thursday. Amy notices John and is immediately startled. As soon as he's out of the building, John gives the order to turn off the power. The officers try to call for backup, but all communication is lost. The sheriff arms himself with a rifle, not even realizing there are many more enemies. Dina arrives at the hospital and learns that Billy has escaped. She wants to help catch him, but Brett says that this case belongs to the police. Hardin listens to Frank and asks why he decided to save this girl. I figured the kid had something they wanted and that they try again, so I took her, I split. Frank offers to give Amy up, and then they'll survive. The other cop suggests taking a chance and going to the nearest town for help. Frank asks not to do that, but Hardin gives the keys to Ogden. As soon as Ogden gets into the car, he is immediately shot. Hardin runs to help. John comes out of the woods. He once again asks to give away what they need. Hardin decides to hand out all the body armor and get ready for defense. Frank offers to let him go, and he will help kill the mercenaries. Suddenly, the building starts to come under fire. The policemen return fire. There's an army of them out there. At the same time, the mercenaries kick in the door and run into the station. Amy finds the keys and tosses them to Frank. He immediately starts doing what he does best, killing enemies. After a couple of minutes, they chase the mercenaries out of the building and the gunfight ends. Now the sheriff trusts Frank. First, he asks Ogden to sit on the floor. That way, he'll lose blood more slowly. But for Ogden to survive, we need to act first. Frank is about to open the hunt. After a couple minutes, two men run up to the building and try to throw a Molotov cocktail. But Frank hits the bottle and begins the assault on the forest. The numbers of the mercenaries dwindle rapidly. He even uses the wounded as bait. The cops don't understand how one man could kill everyone. But it doesn't matter when he's on their side. John spots Frank and prepares to pull the trigger. But the helicopter blinds him and he misses. Frank thanks Dina for her help and he learns that Billy has escaped. Frank's ready to catch Billy, but on one condition. Amy goes with him. On the bus, a man approaches Billy and makes fun of his appearance. It was a big mistake. Billy followed him and took his clothes. Frank and Amy are going to live in Dinah's apartment. The TV shows the news of Billy's escape and tells them the signs to look for him. Billy sees the news. 
and it helps him remember a few things. Danny gives Frank his armor and asks him to kill Billy. As Amy slept, she had nightmares with her friends still alive, but they were all killed while she was hiding under her bed. Frank comes to visit Curtis. He's happy to see his friend. They try to figure out where Billy would have gone. The next day, Billy sneaks into Arthur's apartment. He offers to pour coffee and asks what's wrong with his face, after which he tells him how much he despised him in the past. Billy's mood instantly changes. Amy reveals that Fiona embedded her in the catering team for the funeral. They were to take pictures of various men. Frank doesn't understand why the routine photos got her friends killed, but in order to survive, they must fight back. Frank recalls that as a kid, Billy got into a fight with a bully. That kid hurt Billy's shoulder. They wanted to get back at him, but Billy changed his mind. This man's name is Arthur. Amy went to the electronics store and used the computer. She learns that Frank is known by the alias of the Punisher. By the time Dean arrives at Arthur's house, it was too late. Amy returns home and admits that she has learned about his past. Late at night, Dr. Krista gets a visit from Billy, and she lets him into her home. Krista doesn't understand how he knew where she lives. Billy says he followed her. Krista takes him into the bathroom so he can wash off the blood. Afterwards, she tries to call the police, but Billy approaches from behind. He says he wants a better version of himself back, which makes Krista change her mind about calling the police. In the evening, Amy amuses Frank by showing him a few tricks. The only way to win is to not play. Just gonna make sure we're the dealer. Then he goes to an arms dealer named Turk. He wants information on where he can find the Russian mob. Turk says that if he wants to kill them, he needs to look for them at the gym. They don't bring guns into the gym. However, Frank wants Turk to come to the mob himself and tell them that Frank has the pictures that everyone is after, and Christy trains Billy to control his emotions. A new day arrives. Dina reveals that she found Arthur dead, but she is interrupted by Amy and asked to help deal with the Russian mob. Dina doesn't like Frank drawing attention to himself. John is visited by Anderson and he tells him where Amy is hiding now. A new day arrives. Frank is staking out a mob gym. Turk walks in and asks for Konchevsky. The man says he's been killed and Turk starts choking him. When Frank gets home, he notices things are scattered everywhere. Amy says she stole Dina's credit card and decided to buy some stuff. A couple minutes later, Turk calls. The mob had gotten him to set up a meeting place on Turk's behalf. What they didn't know was that Frank had been watching their club and guessed they wanted to set a trap. Before leaving for New York, John visits his wife. She promises that if he fulfills the task and is committed to the faith, she will definitely live to see him return. In the morning, Billy notices Dr. Christie holding sessions at her home. She is visited by a former soldier trying to understand the meaning of life. The same soldier attends Curtis's group. When the meeting is over, he decides to have a drink at the bar. Billy joins him and offers him a drink, like soldier to soldier, and they sit in the bar until nightfall. However, the man realized from the beginning that Billy was sitting next to him. He instantly grabs a glass, but the man says he is honored to meet the good soldier. Frank's fracture has healed, and now he may not have to wear a cast. That's never been better because there's an appointment at Turk's house today. However, Frank knew that Turk was being held at the gym and comes to visit the Russian mob. A local thug emerges from the crowd, but he loses by just one second. Frank uses the gym equipment to defeat the mob. That leaves the ringleader. He tells him that Nikolai Poloziev is looking for pictures. Frank returns home and says the mob wasn't trying to find them. Nikolai is behind everything. Amy types his name into Google. She finds out he's a former Russian cop, now an industrial tycoon, which makes him a dollar millionaire. Later, they pack up their stuff and go to Curtis' place. Meanwhile, John takes down the Mafia. Tomorrow, the duo infiltrate an underground photo studio. They want to find out exactly what is on the photographic film. Then they follow Nicholas to find out his habits and favorite vacation spots. Toward morning, Billy returns to Curtis's house and starts peeping at her, but the girl closes the door. As an apology, he makes tea. Frank teaches Amy self-defense techniques. At first, she does not succeed, but still manages to take away the gun. Frank praises the girl. He also says that taking the gun away is not enough. She has to be ready to pull the trigger. 
Before he leaves, he says that when he comes back, he'll call her by name, and if it won't be him, Amy should take the shotgun and escape through a trap door in the floor. Later, Curtis notices someone aiming at him. He immediately recognizes the voice. Billy orders the gun to be unloaded, after which he asks a few questions. Billy doesn't remember shooting Curtis, but he's sorry. He warns that he's never going back to the hospital, and if they want to catch him, he'll have to fight back. He also wants to find out exactly who mutilated his face. He remembers the skull emblem, but he doesn't remember the person's face. Curtis replies that he doesn't know, and Billy leaves. John gets a dossier on everyone who's helping Frank, including Dina. Frank luries out Nicholas drivers, and Amy shows him the compromise photo. He gives the order to catch the girl. Amy comes around the corner and quickly changes her skirt. He gets into the car where Frank is waiting for him. He has a strong argument for Nicholas to be quiet. Danny comes to his favorite cafe every day. John finds out about it. Then he starts following her. Danny realizes she is being followed and orders her hands to be raised. John tells her they share an acquaintance. He would appreciate it if she would tell him where he can be found. Danny pulls out her cell phone and takes a picture of John. She can't arrest him because of which John calmly walks away and says they'll meet again soon. She goes back to the cafe and asks the waiters not to put the dishes away. Danny takes all the dishes to work and asks them to collect all the fingerprints. Frank takes Nicholas to a deserted place. Nicholas blames himself for not having foresight. He knew Frank killed his men, but did nothing. That surprises Frank because he was killing his guards, which means they have a common enemy. Nicholas gives us two names, Anderson and Elise. They own a major oil company, but the photos could ruin their plans. They show their son, David, in the company of other guys. Nikolai will pay a lot of money and secure safe passage out of the country if Frank gives up the photos. He's not interested in his offer. Then Nikolai asks him to leave his family alone. They don't know what their father is doing. After hearing the story about his family, Frank decides to spare him. See you back in America again, I'll pay you a visit. Billy lounges in a bar with other ex-soldiers. One of them gets his car towed away. Billy tells his friend not to worry. They overtake the tow truck beat up the driver and take the car. The man praises everyone for their smooth work and suggests robbing a bank. Billy likes his idea. Tomorrow, the man tells Curtis how a man with a torn face beat up the tow truck driver. Curtis asks what the man's name is. Upon hearing Billy's name, Curtis immediately changes. Nicholas is about to leave the country, but his plans are ruined by John. Curtis sets up a meeting for Frank and Dina. He says he knows where Billy can be found. He is clearly insane, and if the police try to arrest him, he will fight back. Frank also promises to deal with the man Danny photographed, but Curtis asks him to put that case on hold. They have to kill Billy first. However, Danny says she doesn't want Billy dead. He needs to be put in jail. Frank guesses that she's lying. Otherwise, Curtis would be interrogated by special agents. Before leaving, he asks Curtis for Billy's address. A new day is dawning. Billy is starting to feel better. He likes not being locked away. He's even made some friends, but he has unfinished business. Dina got prints from all the people at the cafe. However, one print is impossible to read. Even the photo didn't help find John. Danny doesn't think it's possible. The woman says someone helped him disappear from the database. Billy and the group practice the upcoming robbery. Billy gets emotional and hits his partner, but he's not mad at him. It's time to devise a plan where everyone has a role to play. All night, Curtis and Frank wait outside the bar, but Curtis knows Jake is addicted to a special substance. He goes to the street where the substances are sold and finds Jake. Frank knocks Jake out instantly and takes him in for questioning. Jake won't tell them where they can find Billy. Frank has to punch the man. Jake is sure that if he hadn't been tied up, he would have easily beaten the Punisher. This makes Frank laugh, and he cuts the duct tape and leaves his knife behind. Jake runs to attack and immediately loses. <laughs> Frank gives one last chance to tell where Billy is hiding. Dina can't watch this and orders him to stop. You're out of control. Oh, Christ, don't start with me. A couple minutes later, Frank returns, and Jake talks about a future robbery. After 30 minutes, Frank arms himself with a gun and goes into the hangar where Billy's group was hiding but there's no one there. 
They begin the robbery. Billy asks Lillian to open the door to the money vault. She turns out to be very brave and refuses to cooperate with the robbers. And then another employee pushes the button. The gang takes all the money and one hostage. Outside, Frank was waiting for them. He shows the emblem of the Punisher and Billy is literally numb with fear. The gang opens fire and drag Billy into a car. A chase ensues, but Billy asks them to stop the car. He waits for Frank and ambushes him. Frank only has one bullet left. Curtis knocks out the sniper and takes the rifle. He aims at Billy, but can't get a shot off. The police arrive and a gunfight ensues between them. Frank seizes the moment and runs away. And Billy's gang opens suppressive fire so he can get into their car. Sergeant Brett runs after Frank and stumps him. He kicks his gun and gets to his knees. When suddenly a bullet flew by, Curtis comes to the rescue to keep Brett from finding out where they went. Frank knocks Brett out. Back in the hangar, the gang begins to wonder why the Punisher came after them, and Bill's eyes flash back to the moments where his face changed. Suddenly, he pulls out a gun and kills two men. Then he takes all the money for himself. Toward nightfall, he comes to see Krista. She doesn't like the fact that Billy left her and then came back. She still lets him in the house, though. She immediately asks, what is in the bag? Billy says he found out who wears the Punisher armor. He doesn't understand why his friend would want to kill him, as if he did something to him. After a short conversation, they kiss. But after a couple hours, Billy blames Krista for trying to use him. He starts breaking things, and Krista says she loves him. She believes that Billy can change, and she will be with him until the end. Brett is with the police checking out the hangar. Frank follows them to find out something useful. A few minutes later, he returns to Curtis and tells him that Billy killed a hostage. Curtis blames himself for not pulling the trigger when he had the chance. And now, the hostage would be alive. Frank wants to visit Jake and find out where Billy might be now. He uses his fists to do so. Curtis asks Frank to stop. He becomes like Billy. Late at night, Amy notices someone's footsteps. She remembers the word Frank was supposed to say. And since no one says it, Amy fires the shotgun. Shit. The man is Curtis and he miraculously survives. Billy meets with his gang and gives up all the money. However, he says it's a very small amount for these guys. If they want the big money, they need to team up and the proceeds from the last robbery to invest in weapons and new people. Talking about not taking any more shit from anyone! At the same time, Dina comes to see Curtis. She warns Curtis that Brett's looking for him. In the morning, Frank comes home and tries to convince Dina that the likes of Billy and John will never abide by the law and he needs to fix the problem. On the news, there's a new gang at war with other gangs. They've stolen half a million dollars in a few days. Anderson doesn't like that Frank is drawing too much attention to himself. If the police catch him, he can use the dirt. John wonders what exactly is in the pictures. Anderson evades answering and asks John to get every mercenary in town on them. He goes to the Continentals and gives $5 million to bring the mercenaries in alive. Curtis manages to find out what line Billy's men are negotiating. They ambush them, but no one survived. But there was a picture on his phone with a waitress from the bar. Arriving at the right address, he interrogates the waitress. He is spotted by gangsters and wants to make $5 million. This was a big mistake. Amy doesn't like being forced to sit in a safe house, so she runs away again. Billy breaks into Dean's house and finds his notebook from the hospital in the nightstand and stays behind to wait for Dean. She tells him that Billy killed Frank's family and since that day he's been taking revenge on everyone involved. Amy got the idea to go to her friend's house, but the friend wanted easy money and called the guys with guns. Frank comes home and doesn't see Amy. He immediately calls Curtis and tells him there's a bounty on their heads. Amy manages to send the address where she is, and Frank comes to the rescue. Amy remembers Frank's lessons, takes the gun away, and pulls the trigger. Listen to me, okay? His blood went with a single one of your tears. During the night, Frank and Curtis begin to stake out the Billy Gang's hangar, not realizing that Billy had already found them. In the past, John was the best assassin. He was considered a god, but one day he went missing with $1 million. The ringleader ordered John kill it, even though he was unarmed. 
he still came out victorious, even though he suffered many wounds. He returns to his hotel room, but can't sleep because of the loud music. So he visits his neighbors, sitting on his bed. He remembers telling his wife about his past. Even though he was a real sinner, his life would be different now, but he still had to break his promise. And now his wife is dying alone. John calls home, but Eliza picks up the phone and says that Rebecca is on vacation and won't be able to talk to him. Although in reality, she is no longer alive. The next day, Frank goes to the fence and sees people going underground. He's sure it's a back way out in case of an attack. Closer to nightfall, most of the gang arrives. Curtis will cover Frank from the roof while he storms the building. Waiting for Billy to enter the hangar, he starts taking out the guards and comes in through the back door. Frank gets trapped. There were too many enemies. He falls to the floor. Suddenly, he gets a second wind, and he takes out the bandits with renewed vigor. Billy takes cover with his men and hides behind a wall. Frank opens fire and accidentally kills several girls. His main rule is not to touch civilians, because of which he falls into a stupor and waits for the police to arrive. Curtis has to go back alone. Amy turns on the radio and finds out what hospital is holding Frank. She offers to save him, or the hitmen will find him. Karen arrives at the hospital, but Frank is lying unconscious. After a couple hours, he wakes up. Frank tells her that three girls are dead because of him, and Karen can't help him. Karen is followed by Amy, who assures the officer that she needs medical tests. Being a great burglar, she wants to open the handcuffs. It was actually Billy who killed the girls in the hangar. He wanted Frank to feel guilty. Krista asks Billy to leave with her and start a new life. He agrees. Dina also suspects that Frank is not guilty and wants to do her own investigation. The duo learns all the known information from the man. Dina immediately realizes that Frank is innocent. There is a knock on John's door. He opens the door and sees Eliza. She has to tell him that Rebecca is dead. John doesn't understand how this is possible since she called him to come back. A policeman enters Frank's room who knows about the $5 million reward. Frank is ready to die, but Amy comes to the rescue. Frank tries to save the girl, but his hands are chained to the bed. Crikey notices Dina and knocks the officer out. Your mother! Scratch you! She reveals that Frank is innocent. Billy was trying to frame him. Karen pulls the fire alarm. At the same time, John arrives at the hospital to finish what he started. Frank, dressed in an officer's uniform, runs down the stairs. Brett orders all exits sealed off and accidentally bumps into Corette, who is walking without shoes. That many shoes. Gave him away for a worthy cause. A little while later, Brett finds Frank and locks him in an ambulance. Brett wants to take him straight to the police station, but his plans are thwarted when John shows up. He shoots up the car. Frank asks for the keys, or they'll both die. Brett refuses, and they drive off the bridge. Suddenly, John is hit by Dina, but he manages to get away. Frank takes the key and uncuffs him. He sees gasoline spilling out of the car and immediately goes back for Brett. Brett is grateful for the help and decides to let Frank go. A short time later, he comes to see David. Frank accuses him of all the murders but David says he doesn't know what he's talking about. John finds Amy's house, but only Curtis was inside. He asks him to sit on the couch and not to make any unnecessary movements. John doesn't want to hurt him, but he doesn't have much time either. He needs to find out where Frank and the girl are now. Curtis assures him that he doesn't know Frank. John pulls out his brass knuckles, but is interrupted by Amy. Curtis instantly attacks. Amy grabs a shotgun and wounds John. Curtis grabs John and tells Amy to run. John throws a series of punches and knocks Curtis out. Billy's whole gang is in. They want to deal with Frank. However, Billy says they need to take the money and leave. As a parting gift, everyone gets a new passport. When Frank gets home, he notices that the hatch is open. John has left Curtis alive. Frank tries to call Amy, but she lost her phone when she tried to escape. Then he proceeds to interrogate David and to make him think better shows him the dirt. 
David still says he doesn't know anything. Maybe his parents are behind it. Frank realizes he's not lying and asks him to call his parents. They start threatening Frank. Unaware that the conversation is being recorded, Frank proposes a trade, Amy for David. John returns to the hotel, unaware that Amy has hidden in the trunk. She takes a shotgun and goes in search of John. With a knock on the door, she discovers where John lives. Dina comes to visit Krista, as she thought it was strange that Billy was saying words that Krista herself often uses. When Krista has retreated to the bathroom, Dina finds Billy's notebook and pulls out a gun. Just as suddenly, she is attacked by Krista. A fight breaks out between them, and Dina pushes her through the window. The last thing she sees is Billy standing there with a bouquet of flowers. He immediately runs into the house and opens fire. Dina hides behind the couch. After waiting to reload, she comes out of hiding and hits Billy, but he still has enough strength to strangle Dina. After a while, she regains consciousness. Krista survives as well. Curtis gets a message from Amy. She shows Frank John's number. A gunfight breaks out between them. John runs out into the hallway and takes Amy hostage. He knows David has been kidnapped and sets up a meeting for the exchange. Just as suddenly, the elevator doors open. Frank runs in to attack and knocks out the officers. Senator David is willing to help causing Curtis to take him to Brett. David says he was treated well, and Frank tries to get justice. Frank comes home and doesn't know where David's gone, because of which he sets up a meeting near the trailer. When John arrives, he says he has to finish the mission. Since Anderson has his children, Frank manages to convince John to let Amy go, and when the girl leaves, he admits that David isn't here. A fight breaks out. He grabs John's gun, but there were no bullets. John hits Frank with a shovel and starts choking him. He manages to break free and round two begins. In which Frank emerges victorious. With his last strength, John pleads not to hurt his children. Billy is badly hurt and asks Curtis for help. Curtis promises not to call the police. A short time later, Frank comes to Billy's house and completes what he started. Late at night, Amy sneaks into the Addison house. Eliza grabs a knife and is killed by Frank. Goddamn murdering bastard! He shows their videotaped confession and doesn't understand how such parents turned out to have a kind and well-mannered son. Frank gives Anderson a gun and one bullet. Waiting for them on the way out of the house was John, who picked up his sons. Tomorrow, Frank gives Amy money and the number of a good man in Florida, after which they hug and Amy leaves. Three months later, Dina has become a CIA agent, and she needs Frank to eliminate evil people. But Frank refuses. He's got a lot of work to do. This is the end of the Punisher series. I'll dance with you. If you suddenly did not watch the first part, it is waiting for you on the channel. We will be glad to your likes and comments as you evaluate this series. We'll be back soon. Bye.